Hi all! Today we're going to talk about the Candidate Disposition Performance and Assessment Rubric. Now this is how we're going to look at your classroom dispositions, how you're handling different aspects of your classroom. Your mentor teachers are practicing with some different scenarios on how to fill this out and things that we're looking for, but we want to share that information with you as well. So you're going to be rated here on quite a few dispositions, and it's going to be on a scale from one being unacceptable to four being exemplary. Now, we are expecting all of you at this point in clinical practice to be either proficient or exemplary on the high end of the scale. Anything below that, we will set up a professional development plan with you to help you get to where you need to be because we want you to be successful inside the classroom and outside the classroom. So the first piece that is part of this is integrity. The teacher candidate abides by professional code of ethics for teaching and demonstrates ethical behavior and integrity in your actions. She or he is a person of good reputable character and always maintains confidentiality. And you'll notice that aligns to our TAP standard number nine dealing with um, ethical decision making. So all of these are aligned with those TAPs. Then we have interaction with students. So teacher candidate interacts positively and maintains appropriate relationships with students. Reference your state's code of ethics uh, for teaching if clarification or appropriate relationships with students is needed. So when you look here though at the scale, I just wanna point this out, number one, Unacceptable would be teacher candidate interacts negatively with students, such as yelling or screaming at a student and or belittling students. Now, these are not things we anticipate seeing from you, but we want to spell out what that one would look like. In the same token, the four, teacher candidate interacts positively and maintains appropriate and caring relationships with students and has good rapport with all students, not just some, but all of them in the classroom. So then you would earn a four exemplary. Then we also look at your attitude and demeanor. Teacher candidate maintains a positive attitude and demeanor. She or he is flexible, professional, and enthusiastic. Now there's going to be some days you really don't want to be enthusiastic or have a positive attitude. There's some days that are just going to be really, really hard. But keep in mind these are elements that we're looking for on a continued and constant basis from you. Then we have um, communication. Teacher candidate communicates effectively and professionally in all domains. So this is verbal, nonverbal, written, technological, and with tact. Now, some of us prefer certain means of communication. Personally, I like talking to people. I, I will email if it's necessary or use written communication, but I really prefer being able to talk to somebody because you not only get the verbal, you also get that nonverbal aspect of communication, which tends to clarify quite a few things right away. But sometimes that's not um, um, uh, appropriate for a given situation. And so you need to be able to use all of those forms of communication. High expectations for all students. Teacher candidate is committed to student learning and believes all students can learn. They hold high expectations for all students. Attendance and punctuality. Teacher candidate is always present and on time to work, school, meetings and events. So let's say you're on time all the time to coming into your classroom, but you've got a parent night and you tend to run late for parent nights or PTAs. That falls under this. So you got to make sure all things you are attending and you're punctual. Dependability and reliability. Teacher candidate demonstrates consistency in tasks and responsibilities. They are considered to be reliable and dependable by peers, professors, and mentor teachers. So this isn't just you're doing um, everything your mentor teacher asks and you're being reliable for it, but let's say you're working with a team and you're given a job by that team of teachers and you haven't seen it through. That would fall under this category as well. Interaction with adults. Teacher candidate interacts positively and maintains appropriate and professional relationships with adults, including parents, colleagues, etc. So this is adults in general. It's not just your mentor teacher. It's not just your supervisor. You're also looking at your colleagues, the people you're working with in the school. And it could be people outside of your initial core group. So it may not be people in your team, 
This could also be looking at how you interact with support staff, parapros, librarians, custodians, everybody in that school setting. Then we have number nine, collaboration. Teacher candidate works collaboratively with colleagues and is a valuable member to the team. She is cooperative and a team player who is willing to assist and accept responsibilities. So you offer to help. You take on responsibilities that help your team, not just necessarily your mentor teacher. You're working with others. Organization and preparedness. Teacher candidate organize the classroom to optimize learning and provides academically challenged learning environment. She is well prepared for teaching. So you have set up your class to learn well and you are prepared for your teaching. You're not flying by the seat of your pants because you forgot to do a lesson plan. This is important, teachability and accountability. Teacher candidate demonstrates a willingness to learn and or grow professionally and has a commitment to improving his or her practice. He adapts to change and accepts constructive criticism and feedback well. And this is hard for us. Sometimes we feel as though when we're getting constructive criticism, it's attacking us personally, but it's not. When we give you feedback, it's never an attack on you personally. What we're trying to do is help you hone your craft, and we're looking at specific behaviors and things that you can do to improve in the classroom. So you want that teachable spirit where you want to say, okay, how can I do this better for next time? Tell me what I can do to improve. Content knowledge. Teacher candidate stays current in the field and understands potential bias within his or her content area. He or she values critical thinking. Number 13, cultural sensitivity. Teacher candidate shows respect for and an understanding of a student or other person's differences, including race, class, gender, ability, culture, religion, and sexuality. Now, coming in as Christians, we may not agree with somebody's lifestyle or choices. However, we're not called in here to say we agree with them. We're called to show respect for them as a person. Remember, these are individuals who were created in the image of God, which means they are already impugned with respect and dignity, and we need to show that to them. Assessment. Teacher candidate uses assessments ethically, makes appropriate accommodations, and uses a variety of assessments with his or her students. Fairness. Teacher candidate makes fair decisions based on data and evidence. She treats students fairly and equitably. Fair does not always mean equal. So for example, when you have students with disabilities, they might have a book on audio where another has to read it for themselves. What you've done is created fairness, not necessarily getting the same um, modification or accommodation. Use of technology. Teacher candidate understands and practices legal and ethical boundaries for technology. She or he uses technology to enhance student learning and communicates efficiently. Misuse of cell phone and or social media is not an issue with the candidate. Misuse of cell phone could be using your cell phone during the class when you're teaching, checking your messages, checking social media, and also the misuse of social media. While you are within your rights to post on your social media page, remember, others are going to see it. And so keep that in mind that you are to be the light for Jesus in all your actions. Time management. Teacher candidate plans effectively, manages time well, submits work in a timely manner, and meets deadlines. These are deadlines um, by your supervising professor as followers getting lesson plans turned in or videos turned in. But it's also deadlines set by your mentor or teacher, keeping all of those in mind. Self-control. Teacher candidate displays composure and self-control and demonstrates the capability to handle stress. Teaching is stressful. I'm sure you already have figured this one out, but how you handle that is what we're looking for here. Professional appearance. Teacher candidate dresses according to school policy and presents him or herself in a professional manner. We don't want jeans with holes in them. We don't want tank tops. We don't want to be showing too much skin in the classroom. You want to keep that professional appearance that sets you apart from your students. Initiative. 
teacher candidate displays initiative, creativity, and resourcefulness. He or she is intrinsically motivated, which means you're not motivated by external rewards. You're rewarded by what's coming from the inside, knowing that you are working and serving Jesus Christ. 21, professional judgment. Teacher candidate demonstrates professional judgment and makes professional decisions consistently. Doesn't mean you're not gonna make a mistake. We all do. I make plenty of them but on a consistent basis, you're using professional judgment. Passion for teaching. Teacher candidate is committed, passionate, and enthusiastic with regard to teaching. In other words, you like what you do and people can tell. Commitment to school. Teacher candidate supports the school mission and vision, is dedicated to the employer or school, and understands and follows policies, procedures, and rules. This means you're not complaining about your mentor teacher or other teachers on your wing or your administrators. You have a commitment to the school and seeing it succeed. And last one, number 24, problem solving ability. Teacher candidate is an active problem solver. What this means is you don't call us up and say, I can't do, please figure out what I should do. No, you call us up and say, hey, I can't do this, but what if I do this instead? So you're already coming with a solution that we can work through. So this is how you're going to be evaluated on your PBDA. And I know y'all will do fabulous and I'm so excited to see them.